What were you doing when you were six years old? Trying to learn how to tie your shoes? Trying to see the refrigerator light turn off right before you closed it? Learning full ZBLO and getting a sub six official average? <laughs> no one would ever do that last one. That was that was just a joke. Wait. Yeah, I'm I'm done. I quit. Yeah, this is too much. Yes, you just witnessed this child get a five second average. I remember when Yihang was getting sub-8 averages at age 6, but this is just something completely different. Basically, this 6-year-old girl and another 6-year-old went to their first cubing comp this past weekend. And they both got sub-6 averages. Now, there are two of this them. is officially getting out of hand, as if it wasn't already getting out of hand before. Like, what? I'm pretty sure the boy got a faster average than the girl, but I want to focus on her today because she solves the cube in such a unique style that usually requires years and years of experience uh, to perfect. And the amount of cube knowledge she already has at age 6 is just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, in all 5 of her solves, she used ZBLL, which is around 500 algorithms. And I'm pretty sure she also used ZBLS as well, which is another 300 algorithms on top of that. So using both of these in tandem can be a very efficient solving style. But the caveat is, of course, that it takes around 800 hours to do so. And this solve in particular is my favorite example of her doing this, where she basically did ZBLS into a soon ZBLL, which is just unheard of. Almost no one even knows the soon ZBLL algorithms to begin with, but she just did one in an official solve, like it's nothing. And she's six years old. And I'm gonna go ahead and break that solve down in particular, as I find that it's very exemplary of her solving style, and um, just a great example of how she solves the cube. All right, so this is gonna be a breakdown of her second solve in the average. Scramble will be in the description. All right, so she's gonna start with white cross here and she's gonna hold it from this angle so that white's on the front. And this is actually something that a lot of these young Chinese cubers like to do, uh, like Yi Hang. Uh, they like to start with their cross color actually on the front and then they'll do wide R or L moves to solve their cross. So what she does is she does a wide R prime, and then she'll put in this cross piece right here so that she has red and blue, and then she'll just do a D prime and solve these two relative to one another. And then after that, something um, very insightful that she does is instead of just doing a D prime, uh, we're looking for this pair as our first pair. So what she's gonna do is a wide U prime instead. And this just lets her solve this into the back very fluidly. And then she'll go for these two next. So pretty straightforward F12 so far. And then she has these two and she chooses to do them with R and U moves. Um, and then she inserts them into the back left. So that just goes like this. And then uh, she's left with this final F12 case. And as I mentioned, uh, she does know pretty much all of the ZBLS algs, as far as I can tell. And um, this one is no exception. So what she does is she does a U prime. And instead of just pairing them up like this and inserting them, uh, we wouldn't have our edges oriented if we did this. And we couldn't do the ZBLL right after. So what she instead does is she does the ZBLS algorithm that goes like this. and that just orients all of her edges. And now something very interesting that she does is she's gonna go straight into the Soon ZBLL, which um, is pretty much something that basically nobody does. Uh, even people that know a lot of this algorithm set, uh, because normally just doing Soon and then PLO would be a lot faster. But it seems that I guess if you know full ZB, you might as well just do this. So uh, she basically does one look last layer on every solve, and the solve, again, is no exception. So the algorithm goes like this. And she finishes with a U prime AUF, and that solves the cube. So it's definitely a very unique solving style, and uh, I'll be very interested to see how far she can really take this and um, if she gets even faster at her F12, which I assume that she definitely will, seeing that she's only six years old. And a lot of the stuff that she does is simple, and some of it is just extremely mind-blowing. And it's funny, because a lot of people like to ask the question, what if Yi Hang Wang learned full ZBLL? And this just might be that. And she's probably only been cubing for, what, two to three years? So imagine her improvement by age 10. Like, 
she'd probably be sub three. That's not okay. So the 597 average that she got was female world record. And what makes her solves so interesting is the simplicity in them. But what I'm more so talking about is her F2L. And you might see, you know, the occasional X-Cross stuff like that, which is pretty normal for a world-class cuber. But what she does in particular in F2L isn't all that fancy, right? You have like normal inserts, um, basic advanced F2L. But what makes the F2L of these younger Chinese cubers so impressive is how they set up the pairs. And in particular, just how they use the basics to make the basics. So a great example of what I'm trying to say here is Yi Hang Wang's 386 PR single, which he also got last weekend. And on the solve, he didn't do any crazy X-Cross stuff or any insane like F12 tricks or anything like that. He did get a PLL skip. What was more important about this solve is how he set up the first two pairs. So basically, he didn't just solve them both in the back or know where they would be in inspection. He actually set both of them up so that they both be three movers and they're very ergonomic to insert them in this way so that you can get a very fast time. So as you can see, this is by no means a lucky scramble at all. I mean, there's really nothing here, there's no huge blocks or anything to take note of. So instead, Yi Hang solves the cross in a certain way so that he can insert the first pair into the back right here, and then the second pair is just a three mover so that you can insert that one as well. So yeah, the rest of the solve was pretty straightforward for the most part, and then just really easy OLO and PLL skip. And when I first started to take a look at Yi Hang's solves, when I was looking at the reconstructions and stuff like that, I was like, wow, this kid gets really lucky and he just gets a lot of three movers and easy pairs. But then I started to take a look at it and I'm like, maybe this is a little bit too much luck. So then I started to see that, oh wow, he's actually like influencing this stuff and he's actively planning how he can insert pairs to form other pairs. So yeah, then there's also the six-year-old boy who got like a 587 average, which is what, like first competitor world record or first time competition world record or something like that. <laughs> I can only imagine what's going to happen when uh, competitions finally come back to mainland China and how many great speed keepers are going to get a chance to compete more often. And uh, who knows, like sub three barrier could be broken a lot faster than you might think. And I really just can't wait to see what Yi Hang and, you know, a lot of these younger cubers can do, especially the girl whose name I have not tried to pronounce the whole video and will not ever try to pronounce in my life. Um, just because I, I literally couldn't. Like, even if I knew the exact pronunciation, I could not do it. Uh, so that's why I haven't through the whole video, in case you're wondering. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it.